Time certainly are strange. Instead of travelling and finding new places to explore, I have mostly been cooped up within the same four walls. As an upside, I have found an appreciation for my garden, and all of the wonderful creatures that come to visit, with the most entertaining visitors taking the form of a bushy tail and adorable face, the grey squirrel. I know of at least a couple different squirrels that visit my garden regularly, having grown used to the guaranteed source of food and feeling safe in the wild corner that I keep. And it was after watching a recent Mark Robber video, I found myself inspired to put my squirrels to the test. However, I wanted to slowly ramp up the challenge over a period of time to try to figure out what these adorable creatures are truly capable of. I have three rules for the contraptions I will be slowly building up. The first rule is that we must start simple. I'll try to find the limits of the squirrel's abilities, but by building up slowly over time. The second, the goal needs to be clear for the squirrel to reach. Nothing hidden away, nothing that blocks him. It would be easy to win that way, but let's try and keep it interesting. And the third rule, a pretty obvious one, nothing that can hurt. That of course only applies to the squirrel, my DIY skills have left me with plenty of scrapes, cuts and bruises. To start us off, I present the diving board. The concept is simple, two pieces of foam sandwiched together with a piece of plastic extending the goal just that little bit further out. I got the diving board mounted up into place and nothing. All of a sudden my garden was completely devoid of squirrels. I put out a little food to draw the squirrel over, but you can probably guess how that ended. I wouldn't have minded too much if the pigeon had tried the diving board, but what can you do? After almost a week of trying, I was ready to call it quits, but just when I was at the end of my tether, the squirrel finally showed up and I realised the problem. Unless the squirrel had a clear sightline to the goal, he does not seem at all interested in trying. Even though I'm sure the squirrel looked directly at it in this instance, it was still a failure. Modifications were definitely in order. And through the magic of a single twig, I was able to prop up the diving board in a way that made the route much clearer. And before long, I would have my result. I have to say I was very impressed. This was mostly just to see if the local squirrels would even take an interest in these obstacles I was building, so I consider this a complete success. I had hoped that maybe the flexibility of the foam would pose a challenge, but this little critter wasn't even phased. Plus considering how easily you chew through the plastic, they clearly have some strong teeth. Anything I am going to build would need to be much tougher and obviously more challenging. But before we get into the challenge proper, I really wanted to test the squirrel for a few basic motor skills and these next two obstacles were really just me testing the waters. To begin with, I just wanted to see if the squirrel would open things. We had seen from the previous test he would happily break things, but I really wanted to know if it was worth building things that could be open or whether he would just break everything. This was a nice and easy one to throw together and it wouldn't be long until I had my answer. I personally think he was trying to break it open, but he managed to open it, so I consider it a prize well earned. Next up was a little climbing challenge, and I know what you're thinking, of course squirrels can climb. But the challenge here was the narrow cane leading up to the tapered top. I mostly wanted to know if the squirrel could handle smoother surfaces, and how happy he was to give them a try. I think this is well within the squirrel's skill set, but I want to be certain before I started building. While the previous challenge had been tackled within the same day, I was not to be so lucky this time around. The weather was absolutely awful. Plus, we had had several visitors to the garden that the squirrel did not approve of. Apparently, cats and squirrels just aren't good buddies. Eventually, he did take a few runs at it, but it would end up with him being distracted or getting scared off. When he finally did go for it, I think the structural rigidity of the cane had been compromised a bit by the recent bad weather. Mm. 
Now I think the squirrel's playing a bit fast and loose with the rules here, but even if I'd explained them to him, he probably wouldn't have listened. Besides, I, I wanted him to get to the food, and he certainly achieved that. I can't really penalise him for my shoddy craftsmanship. This little part may have been a bit of a failure, but it was probably time to get started on the actual challenge. I'd mentioned previously I want the challenges to start easy, so I'm going to begin by expanding on my failed climbing test. This was a little bit more substantial than a cane with a pot on the top, and it was something we could easily build from. And here it is! Quick to throw together, and I doubt it will pose too much of a challenge. I'd give it a 1 out of 10 for difficulty. The plastic clip you can see at the top will be the end goal. With it mounted into place and ready to go, not too much happened. Squirrels are notoriously skittish, and having made such a substantial change to this little feeding area, I'm hardly surprised he was sceptical. I kept it set up and hoped he would warm up to it, but it became apparent quite quickly that he wasn't a fan. It also didn't help that it faced away from where he liked to eat, so I knew I had to do something to improve it. I started with the little bridge that led to the foot of it, and then strung some food up to draw him in. It did eventually draw him in, but with no reason to continue onwards he didn't bother climbing the frame. So the solution is simple. Put a nut at every step along the way, and he was sure to take the bait. He caught on pretty quickly after this. He stuffed himself with the first few nuts and took the third away to bury. Unfortunately you're going to have to take my word for this, because my camera battery decided to die just before he arrived. Luckily I hadn't missed the goal, which was the monkey nut at the top. So I set the camera back up, and almost immediately after I had, under a blinding sunset, he returned. Well I did say this was a 1 out of 10 for difficulty, and he definitely proved that. So let's build out a bit and add to the challenge. The next step involves adding a second tower, with the pot reclaimed from our previously failed experiment, and a bit of pigeon proofing around it. The intention is for the squirrel to climb the original climbing frame, turn at the top and bridge the gap. This tests the squirrel's dexterity and rewards him with a small feast at the end. With that done, there was nothing left for me to do but wait. The weather had turned to a brutally humid day that seemed to be keeping the squirrel from visiting, but later in the afternoon, when it had finally begun to cool, he arrived and test the changes. It didn't take him long to grab the Brazil nut from the climbing wall, he was clearly well trained from the previous test. Now all he would have to do is scale the climbing wall and... Ah... To be honest, I don't know why I thought he wouldn't be able to climb those square poles. Bit of a lesson learned. But maybe he would still use the climbing wall to get to the pot. Well, don't I feel a fool. I started to consider ways to revise the design, such as adding a cone around the square to prevent such an easy ascension. But I would leave that refinement for another day. I'd enjoyed my time with the climbing wall, but I needed to pose a greater challenge to this skillful little creature. Rather than give up completely, I decided to go with the design rocks had been pitching since day one, a seesaw, which the rain kindly demonstrates here. What could be better than a simple hinged piece of wood with a box of goodies at the end? It'll certainly pose more of a challenge, considering the seesaw swings freely. If the squirrel was to succeed, he would need to topple the seesaw and then approach from the ground to crack open the box. This design did have an added bonus, as I was finally able to get my own back on the damn pigeons that kept stealing the squirrel food. As for the squirrel, it would take a little bit of bribery to finally get him to begin to trust the new structure, but before long he was merrily exploring. And before you know it, he had discovered the hidden feature in this obstacle.
I let him play for a while, but unfortunately he didn't figure out that he needed to go to the lower area. So to help him along, I did a string of monkey nuts to draw him to the bottom. This certainly helped, and I'm sure he was grateful for the extra encouragement. But try as he might, he just couldn't figure the box out. I even tried anchoring an extra nut to the lid of the box to hopefully give him leverage against it, but it still just wasn't enough. I left the whole contraption set up to give him plenty of time to figure it out and hopefully come up with a plan. But after days of attempts, I think it was fair to say I'd finally beaten the squirrel. A small victory considering the score, but after days of failed attempts, I am definitely taking the point. It seems if I wanted to beat him, all I needed was the seesaw's terrifying flinging effect, combined with a box that was just a little bit too tough for our furry friend to open, and I could finally say I'd made it to the scoreboard. Now all I needed to do was claw back from the deficit. He figured it out overnight.